So before we actually get started, would you guys like to see the painting? Sure. Yeah. Here it is. That's money. That's oh, shit. Really cool. Yeah. So That's I call really it cool. campfire song, just because you know, kind of, kind of, kind of the vibe, you know. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and do the introduction, and we can get started. Uh, hi, welcome back to another episode of Campus in Conversation. I'm your host, Kate, and today I am joined with two of the five members of the band, Richie Mitch and the Coal Miners. Say hello. <laughs> hi. Hey, what's up, guys? So today we are going to be talking about music. So the first question is kind of just like a brief introduction in how the band came to be and why you guys chose music and like how you got into music. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to start with like the band. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, we both have different kind of stories of how we got into music. Um, and so um, I played piano with a lot of my life, um, just learning by ear. And uh, the homie Nick Hahn, uh, he plays guitar and does the mixing and the art and like pretty much anything um, that is like super weird around the scenes. Um, we've been friends our whole life. And so like one of our goals throughout our whole life were, was to make an album. We just have these weird bucket, bucket list things. So like our freshman year in high school, we were playing a lot of Guitar Hero and we were like, yo, let's freaking make this real thing. And so uh, anyways, we picked up real instruments and like our senior year before we graduated, we wanted to make an album and that ended up being our first album. So um, after some time, like Jacob joined the band, we recorded our second album in, in, in at his house and our third album as well. And then afterwards, uh, Brian and Steve joined and we've been playing a lot of shows together. <laughs> It's been a really good time. So um, that's yeah. kind of the intro, I guess. Um, for me, I guess before, like I moved out to Colorado and met these guys and started playing shows and stuff. Uh, my family has always been very music oriented. My uncle was on the Mickey Mouse Club, the TV show before it was uh, animated, which is like with Christina Aguilera and like Justin Timberlake and all of them. And so he grew up in California as an actor and then eventually grew on to be a musician where he's in Nashville now. So I think it was just kind of inevitable that I at least picked something up and that ended up being guitar. And I've been playing that most of my life. And then when I decided to come out here for college, I met Ryan who had just recently met, or, or I guess had known about Mitch and Nick, but had only recently met and begun playing drums for them. And then that's how I got introduced to Mitch and Nick through Ryan at the dorms first year of college in Colorado. And then, yeah, we jammed once, I think, in the basement of our house. And they were like, hey, you want to play some shows with us? I was like, absolutely, I do. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. That's great. That's awesome. So the next question is, during the process of making a new song, start to finish, like, what is your guys' favorite part? Hmm. Yeah, because yeah, we we I think Steve and I do a lot of similar stuff. So like we do a yeah. lot of songwriting, and like for me, I love arrangements. Um, so I love getting to sit at a computer and like put together every single instrument. Yeah, I think one of my favorite parts is like, I think and Mitch and I I think kind of start similar ways where like it's usually just me and like a guitar, and I know Mitch it's probably him and a guitar or like a piano or something, and then like you write on top of that, but you're also imagining every other layer on top of that like what the bass will do and like what maybe a banjo or a harmonica or the vocal in the background will do and so when you're just sitting there just you and your guitar but you hear it all in your head that's probably one of my favorite parts where you're just like you get excited about what it could be even though you yeah. haven't even made any of it yeah. yeah how how long do you think it takes to write a song roughly um, i've done like 10 15 minutes and i've done a year so it's really like <laughs> It, it's the nice in between of that's yeah. fair do you have like anything that specifically like sparks inspiration for you being outside probably yeah i think that's like a big one or just uh honestly just playing a lot of guitar i think when i play more guitar then the writing just starts to happen and mm -hmm. it's like a big one so. i think for me it's like i try to do a lot of writing either early in the morning or late at night because I think that's the easiest to kind of just clock out like mentally, but and just kind of let everything else flow. I think that's the easiest part when you kind of just don't think as much and then 
continue to. Are you knocking? What's up? No, it's fine. It's Don't okay. worry about it. Okay. Um, so where, where was I? Um, so how has music shaped the world around you? Um, maybe yeah, like most of my friends, I would say, are all musicians. Like I would never have met Steve or Ryan. Um, I mean, in, in like a, a real capacity um, without music. Um, my best friends, like um, it's been a way for me to keep in contact with Nick and Jacob through college. So that's been really huge. Um, also just an outlet, like I, I go to engineering school. So like getting to use my right brain once in a while is like super, super nice and healthy. Right. Yeah, um, I don't know. I think uh, music has kind of just made me more apt to, I don't know how to explain it. I guess, can you hear that? Yeah. That's Nick. <laughs> That's Nick Han. Should I get him in here? Yeah, absolutely get him yeah, in here. I don't know. They're playing video games right now. That's okay. The video game, you, get, you need to get them in here. <laughs> I'm going to go grab them. I'll grab John. I'm scared. Yeah, then. Get the whole crew. Oh, I'm scared. Yeah, Nick's gonna like bust through my wall instead of the door or some shit. Like the Kool Aid Man. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's okay, now it. I guess we will just continue with the questions, and when the rest of the crew shows up, we can go from there. <laughs> right. Um. So, why is m making music important to you? Mm -hmm. You I can guess. ponder it if you need to. I mean, for me, it's a big like motivator i think and it helps me tick a lot so like it's i've just it's become like an integrated part of my my self-care and so like i think that's been really good for me um it's been a good way to like uh, i guess confront things in my life and also just to understand things um you just put a little bit of a deeper thought than service level into some things i never would have really considered um and then just uh was what does music what was the question one more time uh why is making music important to you yeah also just the the, the friendship of it like in making yeah. getting weird with it like you know like we had one day at, at um their house where we would we stayed up for 24 hours and tried to record an entire album and it was like one of like the days i remember start to finish that like yeah. you know it is really deep. <laughs> <laughs> it was vicious oh, yeah. that day was so fun yeah. So you uh, you. For me, uh, I think it's kind of therapeutic in a way, like Mitch kind of touched on it too. It's like you look into parts of your life and things that have happened to you and like your perspective on things in a way that I think a lot of people don't because you're trying to allow, like you're trying to convey some kind of thought, some kind of emotion in a poetic way and a meaningful way that sounds good to some kind of piece of music. And you, in order to do that, you have to really sit and think and re write, rewrite, and then change words and reorganize and rearrange. And I think that's kind of beneficial in a way. It's kind of a form of like journaling almost, you know, people always talk about how journaling can help them. And it's almost like a different form of that. So, and I know Stevenson, obviously we met in film school. So like, that's another creative outlet right. but besides yeah. music. You guys have any other creative outlets that you, you use? Mitch is smart. <laughs> um, my, my creative outlet is I have a Photoshop app on my phone that I go ham on. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I like spend like a Where? quarter of my free time on this app trying to make these weird designs. And they're super unpolished. And for me, like, I, I just have really, like, come to love this, like, wacky version of art that I can create. And I don't have to be proud of it. It's just, like, for me, I just, like, throw it up. And I, I love that. Um, I like artistically. Um... No, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> have you used um, any Adobe products before? Like, Photoshop uh, or? A lot of film editing. Yeah, that's it, though. That's it. You should, you should dabble in it. I feel like you'd have fun. Yeah, I think I think I would. Um, yeah, I, I definitely. We'll see where it goes. I was talking to Nick about like splitting a a premiere uh, suite kind of setup on Adobe, but we'll see. So something you should look into, Stevenson. Yeah. You can you can. Um, go. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm in film school, obviously. So that's kind of. I mean, school alone is one creative outlet, but um, I try to do video projects on the side as much as I can. Um, for a while, while we were doing a lot of band stuff and doing shows, I was doing some video work. We have a lot of stuff that we, I'm 
have yet to put out, if ever we'll put out, but, or just like really good behind the scenes, maybe that'll make its way into a documentary or something one day. But um, besides that, I mean, I try to draw and like create animations and stuff. And I don't know, I'm not as good as I like to think I am. So it's tough when you have these crazy and cool ideas in your head, but you're like, I don't know how to do that. Here's what I say about art. You can't be bad at it. Like it is a fact you cannot be bad at art. So that's my two cents about your artistic abilities. Hmm? I think I think it's okay to say that like one thinks their art is bad though. It's all relative though. Yeah, that's true. You that can true. say it's awful, but somebody exactly. else could think it's a masterpiece. Yeah, exactly. So it's all relative, hence you can't be bad at art. But that's yeah. that's just my opinion on it. Right. Um so how do you hope that your music will impact others? Hmm. Personally, I you I used to care about that a lot. Um, that was like a mid part of my career um, writing, and like I really wanted you know to have like a profound message or like have something that really changed someone's day to day. Um, but I've also found that like for me, I I, I find an art as an outlet now, and I'm I'm really not invested in you know any numbers or you know how people will take it. Ideally, I hope people can use the music for a good background when they are driving, when they're hiking, doing stuff like that. And just, you know, it lets them connect to the world around them a little bit. Um, I try to be cinematic and try to have fun with it that way. So I think that's the only way I hope people take it is just, it helps them feel a little bit of like the emotions that I felt otherwise, you know. Yeah, I just hope it, they like it and they enjoy it, so. <laughs> I think I would say the same thing. Um, for me, I guess my main, my before my main focus was like trying to write super deep, super meaningful, like very wordy things that I just didn't end up sounding good because I was trying to fit too much into something that didn't work. Um, but now I think my main focus has just been trying to make the kind of music that I would want to listen to. Cause I mean, I think I have a decent taste in music and I would say that if I could come close to anything like that, then maybe other people will too, you know, if they, the other people will enjoy it as well. Um, and I think that has actually helped a lot, just kind of like tapping into my roots and taking inspiration from all of the artists that I've listened to growing up and trying to create my own style as well, like figuring out what my style is, because I haven't actually taken a serious approach to recording or writing or making music before. Um, before like I started playing shows for Richie Mitch, honestly. And then, so now it's like kind of just trying to figure that out right now. Yeah. And is music something that you guys like ideally would like to continue as a career path or is it something that's more of like, this is something you just enjoy doing on the side as an outlet? Um, personally, um, this last year we put a lot of effort into doing music as a career path or at least like, trying to make RMCM more of like a, a formal band and do a lot of the, the merch and shows and stuff. And um, it was super fun. Like we met so many cool people and like I had some of the best experiences in my life, some of, some of my best friends, you know? So like it was great, but um, long-term, I think the industry is vicious and I couldn't see myself enjoying my life, at, at, um, you know, being an independent m musician from some aspects. So like, I think for me, I've found that like, I always want to make music and I want to have a career in music, but I want to define what that is for me. So like, that's probably more like, I want to teach math and then every summer make an album or like something like that. Like, and hopefully still be, you know, promote and do all of the ins and outs of the industry and hopefully have connections and stuff, but so I can help other artists. But um, my passion in music would be more helping other like independent artists, if anything, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I think per my personal uh, thought on that would be, I have personally no problem, like think imagining myself in that kind of a position, like doing music as a career. Um, but it's just like he said, it's so volatile, like it's just so uncertain to enter a field like that, especially when you're going to school still, you know, I don't have any definite career path or idea for what I'm going to do after school yet. So I mean, it's kind of easy to imagine maybe music is an option, but it's also difficult to 
work on that when it's like a side hustle. You know, it's tough to dedicate that much time when you also have to work a job and go to school and, you know, online classes are difficult enough. So trying to like, you know, become your own musician on top of that and, you know, starting to like brand yourself and like play shows during the pandemic probably isn't the best thing to do. You know, like the future of concerts looks very sketchy right now, you know. I can't, I couldn't imagine us playing a drive-in concert, Mitch, because <laughs> you, oh. like, that would have been so funny. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like, we would have hated that. <laughs> it would have been stress level, like, we would have been like, is everyone sick? Like, what's you going on? We're in Arizona. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah but... definitely a, a fine balance when it comes to doing art of any kind, because it's like, for a lot of people, it is something that's, like, it's their passion, and they want to be able to do it all the time, but unfortunately that's not always realistic for people so it's finding a way to you know make ends meet but still you know be able to put your everything into your art right yeah well and i i found that you know for me it's not a lot of it is is, is financially based either like I, I honestly i would have no problem being poor and making music all the time a lot of it is my energy um i think like i've yeah. learned i can get burned out so fast and like you got to protect your mental health and all that and so if you get really into it, for me, that would be the big part. Some people can just churn out some amazing music and make it a career and do that repeatedly over and over. And like, they're special people. And I love that. And like some artists can do the same thing. And I support everyone that does that. But I know personally, like I would, yeah, my, I think my head would explode at some point. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's definitely hard to keep up with the pace of it because that's the other thing is like, you kind of always have to be right. pushing new things out there because there's well, always more stuff coming out. Yeah, especially nowadays when musicians starting, like trying to start a career have to make money, you know, you have to, if like, if you want to be a full-time musician, our band needs to make enough to support four or five people, you know, and like at least a minimum wage capacity, you know, and that's way more effort than what all the effort that we put in before, you know, like we were going 110 miles an hour, it felt like, but that still wasn't enough, you know, and especially now with like streaming and the lack of concerts, like artists aren't getting paid nearly enough, you know? Yeah. Can I ask like, how has, you know, this whole COVID and quarantine thing been on, on the band and the whole making music process? Like, has it sparked creativity because you're stuck at home more? Or is it like, well, we can't meet and uh, or oh. Yeah, a mixture. Um, okay. So lots of really, really, interesting dynamic over quarantine um mm -hmm. like so we when quarantine started we were like planning a tour and like we were gonna travel the states and yeah. <laughs> all this crazy stuff get a van and it would have been really yeah. cool yeah it would have been a crazy summer steve we would have seen some cool shit we would have been so tired <laughs> was, like, we would have been doing like night after night of just driving from show to show mm -hmm. so um basically like when april hit we were we played one show made um we like played for a company in in my living room um and then we i, I we all recognized like we're burnt like we were burnt or at least i was burnt and i was very vocal about it <laughs> um and then we all uh over the summer like i think it's been a good regrouper for us and like for me it's been like how can i do this music thing that i love like health like in a healthy version and in a healthy way and like I think Steve, have you have? And I've, I've came over, and it seems like you're super active, playing a lot of music and doing a bunch. So yeah, I mean, I'm trying. So I mean, kind of similar to Mitch and Nick, I have a really good friend from Michigan. His name is Jake, and I would say that him and I are like the Michigan version of Mitch and Nick. Like we've been best friends our whole lives, and all throughout high school, like all we ever wanted to do was make an album. And kind of similar to the list that they did in high school, we, him and I were seniors in high school and we were like you know we've been trying to record music for like three years and we haven't concretely come out with a start to finish project that we could say we've done you know and so i think over like a course of three days in literally like a barn the most like acoustically unsound space that you could have with like a usb mic and one guitar and I think my friend brought a microphone over maybe we made like a four song EP that's on SoundCloud under the name Camp Vegas and it's okay I mean it's all right like we mixed it on 
a copy of FL Studio that was pirated and like shut down. Like we couldn't save the project. So we had to like finish them, you know, like that's how it went. So um, we had, we basically took a break from any of our music like aspirations once him and I went to college, um, especially because I moved out to Colorado. And then I started playing shows for Richie Mitch and was all gung ho about that. So like I was super invested in learning all the songs and it was a great time, honestly. And it was like one of the best experiences ever. But it also showed me that I think that's something that I would like to try to do on my own, maybe, you know, or like with my friends, you know, like, uh, like even in with if Mitch wants to like play a song or like come up, you know, like it'll still be the same group of people, but maybe just different music. Um, so he, he is in Michigan right now going to school and him and I have been sending files back and forth of stuff that we're recording and just like voice memos and lyrics and stuff, kind of just workshopping songs over Skype, you know, over Zoom and shit, you know? And so trying to write an album basically and come up with something that we can release under the name Medallions. Ooh. That's the name that's right now. Fun, that's a fun title. I like that. So would you guys ever consider like, I, cause I feel like you guys have a pretty clear sound in terms of like the overall aesthetic of like the, the music. Would you ever try switching it up and doing something like hardcore rock or like uh, punk rock or, you know, one of the, like something crazy. Steve, you want to, you want to talk about this one? Uh, should I talk about like the next, sound like approach to the next tape or should it be a, more about the, the other about, band? we can talk about the shit fuckers a little that's bit that's what i was thinking yeah i was thinking shit fuckers okay. okay yeah so we have another band uh i guess yeah so wait, wait how many bands are you guys in so earlier when mitch mentioned that we tried to make an album in 24 hours it was for a project that we have branded the shit fuckers only found on soundcloud at the moment um and themes, though. so go. we yeah so the goal was to try to do an album a whole album start to finish in 24 hours and we had it all planned out but basically we were idiots and decided to start at midnight and go like midnight to midnight as opposed to like just waking up at 8 a.m going like <laughs> you know that way so we were super tired and ended up like taking a break at like five or six to sleep for an hour or two and by the time we actually got started like we were all hazy and just like kind of not ready we ended up writing maybe three or four songs and one sounded pretty good as we started it so we kind of invested most of our time into that one and we completed the day with one complete song Matthew McConaughey which currently has over a million streams on SoundCloud so snaps to that nice <laughs> Yeah. Do you guys have your like favorite songs off the album or a favorite album or are you kind of like, oh, I love them all. Just in general. Hmm? Of like our, like Richie yeah. Mint? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I think I am probably the biggest fan of the third album because that's what I first was introduced to. Like when Ryan first started showing me uh, some of your guys' music. But then going back, I've come to enjoy and like appreciate some of the earlier stuff, I think. I really liked uh, my favorite one songwriting wise is Solstice. So that's my, I always tell people that's my favorite. Um, I think Subliming is like my favorite project we've done because it's just like the work we put into it and how polished it, it came out. And like, I would say it's the one I'm probably most like proud of making um, and like the newest, like the album that we're working on right now is definitely going to be probably yeah. my favorite. It's, it's this is the one I think I'm most excited to like see, you know, here, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I hope it comes together. It's going to be a long time. Uh, we're excited. It, it probably will. I don't doubt that it's going to be like yeah. great. <laughs> so then do you guys like have in terms of other like music inspiration, like favorite artists or favorite bands that you know, you take inspiration from, but also, or like you just look up to as whether, whether it be musically or just like as people. Um, my favorite songwriter is uh, Adrian Lanker from Big Thief. She's just an incredible like wordsmith and like really, really genius. I love uh, a lot of like 
I got a lot into like blues and country music a lot. Um, so I really like um, like songs of Hia. He's a great artist. Um, I also like, uh, um, what else do I like? I would say like this, I've definitely got a lot more into like the crunchier stuff, um, like a lot of folky um, country music lately, which has been cool because I always hated country. So it's kind of nice to try it. Um, right. you know, like, I like a lot of rap and uh, yeah, so all over the board. Um, my main influences come mostly from the music that my dad showed me growing up. So <clears throat> psychedelic rock, Pink Floyd is probably my favorite band for sure. Um, and then like 90s grunge and that era of music. So Pearl Jam and Nirvana and Al Alice in Chains, Jane's Addiction and all of those. Um, but then I've gone on to kind of have my own appreciation for folkier more country music so like bob dylan and then more recent stuff like uh i mean i think mitch and i can both relate to being fans of pine grove and um artists like that i'm a big uh huge big thief fan as well um and recently i've been i've just been listening to a lot of random artists like it's tough to say who i like the best because i feel like i've just been shuffling through like my discover weekly list like liking one song from one artist and then not really looking into their catalog much else you know so i have all these one songs from by these random artists that i'll probably never hear another song by spotify has definitely made it easier to find new music but it makes it harder to find yeah. like one specific artist or one specific right. band that you just love right also zoom is yelling at me that we have 10 minutes left before it <laughs> ends the meeting because apparently that's a thing yeah. um <laughs> but is there anything else you guys want to say and of course you know everything will be linked down below you can find all of their music on pretty much any streaming service spotify apple all the all the good stuff but yeah is there anything you guys want to add or say or promote or yeah i have a couple of things um one is independent venues i want to pitch that real quick um there's a lot of um obviously like right now it's hard, hard for venues to keep themselves supported so um try and support find creative ways to support your independent venues or like vote or write your senator i think that's super important because that is like the lifeblood of the independent musician's life like completely so i guess lifeblood of life is not a good figure of speech but uh either way that's important i think that's really important and then also just really try to support underrepresented and independent artists i think that's like key um and at this point should be like a focus um obviously like you like music listen to it but when you notice someone's like independent or something like that then try to find creative ways to support them or let them know like cool thanks for making this music or something so all that See yeah. <laughs> everything, everything that mitch said um i don't really have anything to promote i don't think we have anything to promote right now um we, I mean, just yourselves in general, to anyone who doesn't know of you guys. Promote uh, my pixel art, um, yeah. United Nations official. Come hang out on my Instagram page. Yeah, it's great. It's great content, I have to say. Awesome. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the recording. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, go check out all the links down below. As well, I will be linking resources about forest fires and the Colorado fires for those of you who don't yeah. know. Um, mm -hmm. Please try to, you know, only you can prevent them. So let's prevent them. All right. Well, thank you guys. I'm going to end the recording, but you don't have to hang up yet. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.